Joining tables in SQL is a pain in the ass, unless you write SQL every day. The syntax is verbose and remembering what type of join does what is super confusatron. What's that? You didn't know there were different types of joins? Or was I just talking to myself? Indeed, you can join tables in a relational database in a few different ways, and the type of join that you choose can drastically affect the story that your data is going to tell you. That is what we will dig into today, the story in the joins. This video comes straight from my course, Postgres Fundamentals, so if you like it, well, there's a link in the description below just for you. Enjoy. We now need to focus on getting the data into the hands of the people who will be answering the questions that we discussed in the previous section. They know their tools, they know their data, we have their data, so let's put things together for them. So now the question is, what data are we going to give them? And believe it or not, we can heavily influence our story at this stage just in the way we structure our query. So here's a really simple query that shows us the basic data in our table. It looks good to me. And at this point, what I could do is just take a quick snapshot of my screen and send it along and say, here's what I got, or maybe just write an email with results. Problem is, I might not have known it, but just the way I structured this query could have influenced and or biased my results. That is not a good thing. What did I just do? Presentation of data is a tricky thing, and you need to understand that you can influence people by simply adding too much or too little. The trick is to get it just right, which means we need to understand how joins work. Joining tables together is a matter of specifying what type of join you want, the table you want to join to, and the condition of the join. The syntax is a little verbose, but as with most things code, it's a matter of typing it out a few times before you get it. Every select query has a from statement, select star from some table. When joining tables together, right after the from clause, you add your joins. Here we're specifying an inner join, meaning that we only want to see records where the join condition is true. We could also ask for an outer join, which defaults to a left outer join. That's a lot of words to say, show me all the records in the from table and the related ones from my join table. Correspondingly, we have a right outer join. Show me all the data in the join table and only the matching from the table in the from statement. I could use a lot of words here, but I'd rather just show you what I'm talking about using a highly contrived example, which I generally hate. But this example is a pretty good one. I'm going to switch over to the GUI again. This is Postico because we need to get visual. I'm going to run through two examples here. This first is a little simpler. The second's going to be more complex, but both are going to illustrate how important it is that you know what you're doing when it comes to related data. Here I have a typical structure for relating two seemingly unrelated things. This is called a many-to-many -many relationship, and you see it often. I'm using a joining table called assignments, and its entire job is to relate people to a job. So one job, many people, one person, many jobs. Notice also I'm using a composite key for the primary key of my assignments table. You don't have to strictly do this, but it is standard. I just want to ensure that I don't have duplicate assignments. By creating a composite key like this, it guarantees that the same person can have the same job and the same job can have the same person. The next task is to add some data. And here I'll add four people using a simple insert with hard-coded values, and I'll also add four jobs. The final bit is to relate the jobs to the people. And given that the primary keys are serial values, I'll know that Darth Vader is one, Apple Dumpling is two, and so on. And the same thing goes for the job. Controlling the galaxy is one, baking apple pies is two, and so on. I'm going to give Vader two jobs, running the galaxy and baking apple pies. Apple Dumpling will also bake pies and play the shakuhachi in a tree. Finally, Totoro will play the shakuhachi in the tree and, I don't know if you know this, he's all about galactic domination. Duke Leto, well, he's the only one out of a job. Harkonnen saw to that. Okay, well, how do we query this stuff? We can start off using inner joins, and as you see here, you can join more than one table to your from table. The ordering of the joins doesn't necessarily matter. We'll talk more about that in a second. We just need to be sure that we join the correct keys together. You can see why tables like the assignments table are called joining tables. That's all they exist to do. So running this query and you can see our relationships clearly. But is this correct? Duke Leto doesn't show up at all. Neither does the job of ruling Arrakis. It may be important to report that Arrakis doesn't currently have a ruler and that Duke Leto, well, he isn't doing anything. <laughs> I suppose that's for a good reason. Let's change things around and show all the people that we have. And to do that, I need to use a left outer join with left referring to the tables to the left of the join. When creating joins, you can think of doing so in a left to right fashion. 
each new join appearing to the right of the one before it. In this case, the ordering of the from and join clauses, well, that is kind of important. We're running this, and hey, there's Lido. We can see that he doesn't have a job. The thing we can't see, however, is a full list of jobs. We can find that out if we do a right outer join. Show me all the data from the joining tables to the right. And here we see all of the assignments and jobs, including a job we hadn't seen, <laughs> ruling Arrakis. But we don't see Duke Leto now. The reason why is because he's not related to anything on the right side. This won't do. What we tell the best story is to see everything. And to do that, we can use what's called a full outer join. Show us everything. Doing this, we get all the data from the joining tables, as well as the table to the left, our people table. Here we can clearly see that Duke Leto isn't doing anything, and that no one is ruling Arrakis. To an analyst, this tells a very clear story. Leto's either quit his job, or worse, damn Harkonnens. Okay, let's do one more very quickly, and this is going to look kind of strange. I'm going to drop the tables I just created, because now, instead of jobs, I want to track who's friends with whom. This is the same kind of relationship we just had, a many to many, as one person can have many or no friends, and one friend can have many other friends. So instead of having three tables, I'm going to relate the people table to itself using a joining table. Yes, this looks a little bit weird if you've never seen it before, but it's actually quite common. Now let's add some data and create our associations. And not many people know this, but Vader and Leto, they're actually friends as are Vader and Totoro, which I suppose might be obvious to a lot of you. This type of join is an interesting one because querying it means we need to understand the relationship that's being defined. When thinking about people and jobs, it's useful to know who's doing which job and which job isn't being done. That's a particular story. Here we have a bi-directional association. In other words, if Vader and Leto are friends, I also know that Leto and Vader are friends. It would be confusing to see that twice, wouldn't it? So how would you structure a query to hand this data off to an analyst? Think about that for a minute. Here we only want to see associations from one side, the people side. If people aren't friends, then we don't care. So we're going to use an inner join, which makes things exclusive. Note that I have to join the people table basically to itself through the friends table. This is the weird and confusing part, but it's valid SQL. You'll confuse Postgres, though, if you don't give the table an alias, which I'm doing here using as. It might take a minute to fully comprehend this, but the SQL is below, so please take a minute to play around. Understanding joins at a mechanical level is great, but understanding how joins affect your data story is even better. Here we can see all the friendships. Darth Vader, Duke Leto, Darth Vader and Totoro, and so on.